I'm Susan Anderson. I'm the director of the Bureau of Planning and Sustainability with the City of Portland, and this is jo Jill Kolick, who is. I am the Sustainability and Education Manager at the Bureau. And we're going to talk about Solarized Portland. And uh, talking about solar in Portland in the same sentence for some of you probably sounds funny, but uh, we do have sun occasionally up there. And so um, one of the things about Portland is, uh, how many of you have been there actually? How many of you have been? Okay, so almost everybody has been there. So um, we've been doing sustainability, healthy communities for a really long time. So we have, you know, 70, 75% of all of our stuff is recycled, and we're going to soon go to an every other week garbage collection with every week having. Um, collection for recyclables and compost and everything else. Um, we have a 20% per capita reduction in uh, greenhouse gas um, emissions since 1990. We've got transit oriented development and buses and streetcars and all of those things that you think about when you think about Portland. Um, about five years ago, um, one of the things that we really didn't have, though, um, we, did ha we did have really strong uh, tax credits and incentives for energy efficiency, for renewables, solar, um, uh, biomass, for wind, but we didn't have a really strong solar campaign. And so one of the things that um, we decided we really wanted to do was to focus um, a campaign on solar in Portland um, with the idea that uh, there was just so much more that could be done. One of the reasons um, that not a lot happens was there was a perception that um, indeed it looks like this every day. Even though when we're living there it's not, um, uh, there's just this perception that there's not enough sun. Um, actually, uh, we have about the same amount of sun um, in terms of solar um, isolation for, uh, as most of Europe. Um, definitely as much or more than Germany, which is like um, where most of the solar and is uh, happening in Europe. And so um, we knew that we could do a whole lot better. Um, so uh, when we looked at where things were, we were realizing that we had about uh, maybe 25 or 30 PV installations a year. Um, and we decided we would start um, to run a major campaign. Uh, one of the things that we did was we decided to do that. Uh, we would do it sort of in the Portland way, which is where we try to get together all the businesses that are working on solar, so the solar industry organization. Um, there's a, some solar nonprofits, the state tax credits um, program, the utilities, the Energy Trust of Oregon, which um, does our public benefits fees, you know, and have everybody do this together. Because up until that point, what we realized what was happening was that the messages were getting really mixed, and we were putting in all of this energy, and different people were doing workshops, and the, you know, the customers were confused. So we um, convinced council to uh, provide us with some upfront, upfront funding, and what we did was we called it a green jobs program, and that the focus, at the same time that this is going on, um, a lot of solar manufacturers are locating in the Portland area. Um, we have a lot of, um, we, we call it the Silicon Forest instead of the Silicon Valley. So we have Intel, we have a whole lot of other, other folks up there, and a lot of those um, are, are sort of similar kinds of businesses. So um, a couple thousand employees doing solar manufacturing right here, but not a lot of solar installations going on. So um, we focus, so this is a trick, if you want to go to your city councils and and sell green jobs to get solar. I think that sort of it, it was a nice way to introduce that this was a way to actually um, promote solar in your own community. So we all worked together. We uh, called it Solar Now. Um, the city began working on it. Everybody decided to join in. We had the same logo. We did our marketing together. We did um, our uh, uh, program development together. Um, and that really changed everything. Um, and things began to take off. We at the time had what other cities would have, you know, just died for, which was we had a 75 percent, about a 70 to 75 percent um, incentive level for solar, and that's still what we have now in terms of when you add up the federal, the state, and the other rebates. And so those are just sitting there, and then we had this big information void. Um, of course, what we learned over time was that um, we provided lots of information. We had about 3,000 people come to workshops. Um, and we tripled the rate of, of um, installations in about two years. Um, 
But kind of what we were talking about yesterday in terms of information being just sort of one piece of the puzzle and that people really change behavior, not because they get a whole bunch of information that tells them that this now makes sense, that it's financially you know, a good thing to do, but that um, they should do it because um, it kind of peer pressure. Um, that everybody else is doing it, that this is sort of the new normal in Portland. You not only ride your bike and, you know, we have some, some rooftop um, agriculture going on, we've got bikes, you got all these things, and we should have solar too. And so um, really what we've done is sort of tried to make it um, the new normal um, in terms of, of where we go next. And so Jill's going to talk about um, how we did that and went from about 30 a year to this past year, 550 um, installation. Oh, 600, more this week. There you go. <laughs> Great. So I'm gonna be talking about the neighborhood level community driven volume purchasing program that started with one neighborhood. Um, and it was one homeowner who's interested in solar and she went to her neighborhood coalition. And in Portland, we have seven coalitions that are geographically based, um, they're social networks, they're trusted organizations, and they are expert at community organizing and public participation. So she went to her community, um, her neighborhood association, and brought the idea of doing a volume purchase. And the neighborhood coalition took her up on it. They thought it'd be a great idea to provide that service to their residents. That neighborhood coalition came to the city of Portland and said, we want you as a partner, and we want the Energy Trust of Oregon. The key here is we were support and technical assistance. They were the lead. So it was a really a nuanced position for us to be in. But we were really excited about it. Um, and so Solarize Portland was born. And it was um, created to address the barriers that every homeowner gets into when they're trying to install solar. And it was to engage people in a really easy, easy to understand way. So with that, I have five principles that essentially are the key elements that created the campaign. Um, the first one was the grassroots um, outreach and promotion. And this was completely led by the coalition office. Um, they were the front person. We provided a little bit of seed money, but they were extremely creative in how they approached people and how they talked to them. They were the experts in community organizing. As you can see, they did stuff at street fairs, they went to churches, they put things on church bulletins. It was really innovative. And the call to action was getting your spot in the volume purchase. So it wasn't a commitment, except for to say, we're gonna do this volume purchase, and if you wanna be part of it, get on board. So they signed people up, and um, they had a tremendous response. About 600 people signed up almost, well, over the course of a couple months, and it was quite successful. Uh, the next piece was the competitive contractor selection and the pricing tiers. We were involved in this as a technical assistance, as was the Energy Trust of Oregon. Um, and then the coalition office was our collaborator in this RFP, and actually they issued the RFP. And an interesting element was there was community stakeholders involved, and they weighted price um, equally with it being a minority women emerging business, and also if it's um, locally or sustainable material sourcing. So it's an interesting nuance to the contract. Uh, the educational program and technical assistance was all done in the community. Again, it was using churches, it was at street fairs, it was in schools that people's kids went to. It was very opportunistic in um, dovetailing with other things that were happening. And they relied on us to provide our basic one hour um, going solar workshop. They also creatively had a Q&A um, with the contractor once selected where people could come in and in a very informal way ask questions about solar and get familiar with how the process would work. Um, also an element that happened here was a site assessment where the contractor selected would go out and look at their site for site suitability so someone could pull out of the project at that point if it wasn't a good fit for them. And of course the power of the price. Uh, more people join, the price goes down. It was really a rallying call to get more neighbors and more of your community involved and it was a great price point. What we didn't really know, this is our, my final element on the contributing factors to the success was the power of numbers and the community that was built. Um, these people went to workshops 50 at a time. They saw their, you know, these people walking to school with their kids and they talk about it. It was really reinforcing and it was a really great way to have people go through a group process and um, kind of be able to answer the questions about who are we hiring, what size of an equipment do I need, all those things that really get as barriers as people go forward, there was a sense of community around that, or safety in numbers. We're not sure what exactly it was, but it, it was powerful and it was fun. They really enjoyed each other. So we experienced tremendous success, as Sue had mentioned. We saw that 
We have 600 homes that have done it. It just blew away what was happening prior. Um, and the model has actually gone on to other communities. So we have this, we're now in our fifth campaign, Solarize Portland. So the Neighborhood Coalition um, uh, have set up in three other communities have done the exact same thing. So they're geographically based just like the first one was. So they've used the exact template. It also has expanded past Oregon and across the country. And lessons learned. Um, so for us, it was really trying to keep the community and the grassroots organization in front. And, and so we, they'd be excited and they'd come on board, but they really needed to have buy-in and own it to stay in front of it. Um, and so finding someone that was really had the bandwidth, the community organization had the bandwidth to really stick with it and make it theirs. Um, so supporting that and the care and feeding of those communities and the champions there and making sure that we were being really good partners was essential. The face-to-face -face outreach was our best approach. Um, they did, they set up a website, there were some social media elements, but the face-to-face -face had the biggest return. Um, and then also uh, working with a funding partner was a very nice bonus that we had with the last two campaigns where the upfront cost actually was covered by, um, by a really nice uh, financing package. And there is more information on the Solarize Guidebook that was developed by um, us and some of our partners, and it's on the website, and it's a good roadmap for if anyone's interested in doing this for their community. And that's it. <laughs>